Good morning, caffeine fiends, children of the bean, and other interested parties. Welcome to another coffee review for www.getbean.com. I'm the Mean Bean Machine, and today we're looking at Roastworks and Gale Gorbitu Ethiopian blend. Uh, now, I picked up this coffee in Holland and Barrett, the well-known health food store, uh, which is still open at the moment, as you can still get groceries and health foods and vitamins and things. Um, and I picked up this bag for 5 99 Now, this is 200 grams of ground coffee. Um, I couldn't find any whole bean where I am. Um, I usually buy whole bean, but this is ground coffee. And this uh, particular blend recommends for filter coffee. So as you can see today, we're using a drip filter, which is something I don't often use. I think this is the first video where I've used drip filter. Um, it's not that I'm not a huge fan of it. I am just more of an espresso, I favor espresso. And I find a uh, drip filter can be a bit of a faff. Um, however, I do have a drip filter um, and here we are, drip filtering this Ethiopian coffee. So, um, now one thing about drip filters is that you do have to have kind of all the equipment really to get them going. So you have to have the ceramic dripper. Really, uh, you should have another server. I'm doing straight onto a mug here uh, as I'm serving solely to myself for one single cup. Um, but you should have like a serving jar and really you need a gooseneck kettle, kettle as well. That's not your ordinary tea kettle. That's the little kettles you see in coffee shops that have the long kind of bendy spout that give you greater uh, control over where you're pouring the water. Because when you pour the water into the grounds at the top of the filter, you want to make sure you have uh, as much coverage as possible. So a little bit about um, filter coffees in that sense. You want to... Firstly, you need to make sure you've weighed your coffee and your water so you know you're getting kind of exactly the right amounts. Usually I'd recommend one part uh, coffee to 16 part water, yeah, in terms of grams. Um, but that's if you're serving more than one person. And again, like any coffee, it depends on the grind and the flavour you're looking for, etc, etc. Anyway, that's why I find it a bit of a faff. Um, uh, when pouring over the grounds in the coffee, you want to make sure you get a nice bloom. So that is where the water hits the coffee grounds and starts to release the carbon dioxide. Um, and then you should get a nice bit of bubbling and you should see kind of a different uh, colour coming out. Another thing I would recommend to anyone who is kind of new to uh, first time filtering is when you start the pour, give that a little tap. And then just check in the top to make sure that uh, all the firstly that all the grounds are level and that all of it is getting water. So you, you just tap it to make sure it runs through. Now, uh, I've not tried Roastworks before. Uh, I've seen them around, um, but this is the first time I've tried them. So um, I picked up this bag, like I said, in Holland and Barrett. And what particularly interested me is that they actually note the acidity, the sweetness, and the body, all out of five. Now, I tend to quite like uh, low acidity, high body. So this is not necessarily something I would naturally go for, but it has got a high sweetness, which is something I'm interested in. Um, now, the tasting notes say apricot, jasmine, and earl grey. Now, earl grey is a really interesting tasting note, predominantly because I have no idea what the hell it means by that. I know what Earl Grey tastes like, but it's a tea blend. So why you would mention it in a coffee blend? It's quite a light floral tea blend. It's very odd. It's a tea blend that I wouldn't particularly have milk with. Um, I would have that as a black tea. So it's a, because it's so light and floral. Um, so to mention it in a coffee tasting notes seems very strange to me. Um, but there you go. And then you've got everything else, you know, and saying that this is filter specific. So I've cracked out my um, drip filter today um, uh, to give it a go. Uh, usually we do espresso or cafetiere, but uh, there you go. So the apricot, jasmine and Earl Grey, and it says it's kind of medium acidity. I'm actually fully expecting to get kind of 
the, the pricks of the acidity come right through full notes of it with those kind of tasting notes. Apricot, jasmine and Earl Grey suggest it'll be quite light, so not too strong as it says the body is not, uh, you know, too high there. It's a two out of five. All of these scoring notes are out of five. So we'll give it a go. Um, that I've just left that there for effect. It has actually filtered. So we'll give it a smell. I must say, when I first opened the bag, it had a wonderful kind of chocolatey smell, which is not something I expected given the notes it, um, it you know, has on the bag, the tasting notes it has on the bag. So let's get rid of this uh, filter and we'll give this coffee a go. Oh, it's got a really strong, almost kind of woody tone to it, kind of oaky, which again is not what I expect from the tasting notes. There's no crema because it's not a kind of an espresso and you kind of lose that with filter or you just don't get it with filter. The oil's still there, but it doesn't form. Oh, you do get a bit of the fruitiness. Yeah, the apricot, I can see why they've mentioned it because you do get that later on. So let's give it a taste. Oh wow, uh, that is really strangely fruity. Uh, you would not expect that much fruitiness in a coffee. I would not naturally expect that much fruitiness in a coffee, but I, that's one of the first times I've read a literal tasting note and gone, yes, that's in there. Most times tasting notes are sort of, uh, you know, uh, an interesting jump of the imagination. That I can definitely go, oh, I 100% see why they've mentioned apricot there. In terms of the Earl Grey, I guess that's in reference to the finish. Yeah, I mean, it says it on the front of the pack, you know, uh, accentuating a light tea-like finish. So I understand the reference, but if you like Earl Grey tea, why are you buying coffee in the first place? I mean, you can like one or the other, but coffee and tea is... Yeah, they're incomparable. It's coffee and tea. Um, there's also a weird kind of tea is almost really ritualistic in the way you brew it. Coffee is quite scientific. Um, so there's interesting kind of different cultural tones there that I'm not going to go into. Um, in terms of that, though, that uh, is a really lovely black coffee, really mild. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily try it with milk. I will try it with milk for the sake of this review. But it's very mild, very sweet and fruity, um, which is very odd for a cup of coffee. But I'll give it a go uh, with some uh, oat milk and we'll see how that comes out. But that's really uh, kind of lovely as a black drip filter. Um, I'm really impressed by that, actually, um, considering I picked it up in a supermarket chain. Um, I really, really do like that. And it may actually convince me to crack out the drip filter more so. Like I said, 5 99 for 200 grams, so not the cheapest you're going to find, but it is pre-ground, so it saves you a bit of labour. I don't know if you can get them in bean. I would imagine you can get them in whole bean, but uh, just not in the Holland and Merit that I was shopping at. Now, I've just added a touch of milk to that. I'm fully expecting it just to kind of overpower it, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, so with oat milk, it just kind of kills it a little bit. Um, so really, you just want that uh, as a black coffee, in my personal opinion. Otherwise, you're just having a hot milky drink, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not coffee. That's a hot milky drink. But in terms of a black drip filter, if you have the equipment and the time to uh, do drip filter, that is a brilliant coffee. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for cafetiere because of how mild it is. And the big issue with cafetiere is the longer you leave it, the more bitter it becomes. Um, so, uh, you know, the extraction continues because it's con the coffee is constantly soaking in the water. Whereas drip filter kind of negates that a little bit as it just drips through. Um, as the name suggests. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest that if you've only got a cafetiere at home, but a lovely drip filter coffee for those of you who do have uh, the right equipment. Um, and yeah, really like that. 
really surprised by the fruitiness and how mild it was um, and it genuinely you can taste the apricot so that was a, a really kind of revelatory surprise for me um, but yeah thoroughly enjoyed that thank you for watching please do like and subscribe and check out www.getbeamed.com for more coffee reviews and cafe reviews thank you very much take care